Yeah, so everything cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. I would say what influenced that song was a certain event that happened in the public. Mm-hmm. Mocha Fest, we all saw what happened. Um, with the parties keeping in the hotel spaces and things. Or was it Rick's? Whatever that place was, I don't mm-hmm. remember. But for me as an artist who has been trying to make ends meet and trying to find different ways to just function, it, it, it was a thing that hurt deeply to see that, you know. And what made it even worse for me was to see people in official spaces, representatives, responding in a way that it was like, oh no, we had no idea this was going on, Let's, we need to do this investigation, and how was this made to happen? But at the same time, it was like, it was posted on the official set. You know, and it's like how it felt, and again, I say, I, I say felt as in, to say how things were presented and how it seemed, was that it felt like, it felt like a veil was being put over us, or, or that was the attempt. And I came back, and, and, and me, you know, as a creative, was was able to channel that to say okay like a baline in the song and say hey the hot up skin about not put everything cool you know telling me lies and trying to make it sound nice and a smile and a go on like everything cool and it's that thing of in just the way Jamaican culture is yeah. we present a lot yeah. you know we we, we present a lot of ideas of what we need to be and what we can be and you know Jamaica the land of this and that and that but then you know we promote paradise but that's for a lot of people that's that's poison you know it's paradise where we build up on these hotels and things sometimes that displace a lot of people yeah create you know, this thing where we even talk about like the BPOs and the you know reducing the unemployment rate. We, we, we present that part, but what we don't speak about often is the, regu- is the regulation that it needs, mm-hmm. or just how people working under certain conditions that may not be sustainable for like, properly nurturing Jamaican young people, mm-hmm. you know? Um, we don't speak about those parts. We speak about how the real estate, whatever sector is booming and mm-hmm. thing, but we don't talk about the fact that, you know, to be selling a one bedroom house for forty million dollars, I don't know. So I, I, I'm no expert, but some, some seem, yeah, some, some half seem half about that, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But we don't talk about those parts. So I was like, okay, how about make this song, make it feel like a nice song, melodies nice, vibes it, dance into it and everything. Just to capture that energy of everything cool, but be, be spitting some real social commentary mm-hmm. in a way that is. Fancy movie with yeah. the satire and make it fun, but it's real Serious. life. And mm-hmm. say, them say out of many one real. Them uh, say out of many one. Each man look out for them fellow man. Them a preach equal rights, but it seem like one more equal than the other one. Mm-hmm. Working hard and the funds now run still a willy bounce to the same old song. And I tell the world, say no problem, man. Welcome to Sweet John Dunn, where everything cool. You know. That and touch. That touch on something very interesting and. It made me start thinking about that, which is like the whole idea of the country reaching critical mass. Mm. And I've been seeing the word civil honors being thrown around because of the way of madness are going in the world and in Jamaica. And there are obviously other places in the world where there is civil honors. Yeah. Right? Your song is essentially saying, and it talks about something that I've, I've connected with for a long time. Um, or just the conversation in general that I've been having with myself too, is that at what point, you know what I mean, do we say it's not cool, you know? Like, yeah. And yeah, but that's that's very interesting because this is one of the toughest times you've ever experienced. The whole world, yeah. you know, and it's at what point do we say that it's not cool? All right, this is what like approach to some situations. Mm-hmm. You see, when we can, address a situation as it happens, nip things in the bud. Mm-hmm. Those things might cause for more disruption and, and uncomfortable conversations, but it saves us from the big boiling over. Yes. Meaning, for instance, if, if, if every day you trouble me or annoy me, I say, you, oh, I do appreciate that. It saves me from every day you annoy me for this one month and I don't see nothing until one day me just come and destroy you. Mm-hmm. 
And I said that to say to make that parallel of when things happen in the public spaces and thing, I think it actually serves the whole public the best when an entity can come out and say, yo, we made a genuine mistake here. We made an oversight here. It shouldn't have happened. We were wrong. As opposed to playing it off, defending yourself, ignoring it, ignoring it, because what happened is like a compound effect. People seeing and feeling everything mm -hmm. up until that civil unrest that some people talk about, where if it happens, and I don't want it to happen, that might be bad, you know. But if it happens, it would be like, a, oh my God, where did this come from? One day we were good, and then next day we were In reality, no, we were good for a long time. But nobody was really given that space to talk about it. So if you, even if you look at Tim Bahami in a very recent space where like um, Floyd Green resigned, you know, I, my take on that is whether he wanted to do it or, you know, I think that was the best thing to happen. Why? Because you would not want a situation where everybody saw at him. It's just swept under the rug, and, mm -hmm. and then we don't talk about it in the news cycles anymore. Because what that happens is now, the news might not carry, but you have a whole set of people who say the government can't tell me nothing. That's what was going to happen. The and government can't tell me nothing because me see them as laughing yes. our face, and then them, and then nothing do, and, and then nothing do come of it. So I feel like that resignation was to say, whether true or not, was to say, hey. We have to correct something that we did. We made a mistake. We have to correct this. Yeah, and 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 and, and the stuff like that. Whereas, like I said, it, it absolutely could not have gone anywhere because there are people who get choked in a truck, get choked in a truck, and 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 so many things for just walking on them roads sometimes mm -hmm. for playing music a little bit too loud, and it's like it 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 it. It's, it's not a thing that could have just went, you know? But, yeah, interesting, um, very interesting song, very interesting topic because it really does feel like Jamaica is one of those places where it's under its own spell of, like, we have to project this paradise yeah. kind of thing. And, and so that's... So that's in our personal life too. Yeah, and that's why we're not at a place where it's like, we can say, oh no, this is fucked up. <laughs> yeah, like, like we'll have this like polite thing sometimes yeah. where, you know, you might hate the whole situation, but given the chance to actually speak to the person about it, you probably won't, yeah. you know? Or even just on a general, general sense of like national accountability. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we're not, it's, it's not, because there are a lot of interests who are, who are invested in making things appear a way to. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of like under the spell of that, of, of that, um, that market that we have to serve yeah. of like, like uh, tourism, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. it's like, there, there are people who will, who will make sure that, you know, and obviously a system as well. But that's why I'm saying it's a spell because it's like, all right, we, we are saying we're this paradise and this is what we're presenting to the world, to the point where we've crippled all the other, um, a lot of the other viable exports that we have to say, this is what we, this is what we're presenting to the world, tourism. Mm -hmm. um, and because we're doing that, we have to say, this is a paradise. There are institutions set up to, to almost keep us in that place. Where Project it's like, that paradise. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's a part of what you're experiencing in that. Yeah. And for me, that is why. And even watching the video too was kind of, like it's like a tourist like you know what i mean it's like it's nice tourist attraction that yeah. is just falling apart but people don't seem to be noticing exactly me you me who i was portraying in the video those seem those, those unaffected and oblivious and we we do that a lot in jamaica but at the same time you know i always think it is this thing about social commentary from artists mm -hmm. i think is one of the most important things we have mm -hmm. because Fox. especially no when you talk about nine day wonder, with the speed of social media and things like a nine hour wonder, you know, like things happen, you know, we get angry and we just forget. When you have an artist who, or artists who can take a situation, speak about it, and then have it out into, into the public, 
to keep that conversation going. going. That is, it, it, it is so important and necessary. I mean, me as an artist, of course, I want to make different kinds of songs, but there always has to be a space where we can come and address something that is happening now because we we are like the we are right the real history in a lot of ways. We are right to what can't go on the TV. We are right to what can't post on the article. We have to talk about. We speak for the people. Like all Andrew Wallace speak to the people. Artists have to speak for the people, and it, it's so important for us to keep that conversation going. And use our platform wisely so that that thing I take seriously. As Interesting, as you, as you mentioned, um, taking things seriously, it seemed like even with the, um, you know, the previous song we were talking about, everything cool. Yeah, voice a little bit of frustration. And that's a frustration we can identify with of a, a, a little bit, you know, not as an artist, but as a person. Whereas, like, enough things we sit down and say, like, people come here and I enjoy. And it's like, me as somebody who, like, I'm a native of the space, I can't even afford to do it. Yeah. Them small things that I give you, this, it's kind of frustrating, you yeah. know? Um, but it almost seems like, despite that frustration, you have a strong sense of nationalism. This latest single, uh, we will kind of touch on that. Yeah. How you balance those two things, or how you find some kind of optimism about, you know, or, or as a people, or, or out of many oneness? Well, I would say me coming into music mm -hmm. and deciding that was also me making like an active decision to love Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Love is a verb. Mm -hmm. That's, that is how it feels for me as a Jamaican sometimes where I, I really choose to see the beauty and the power and just that unique force that Jamaica has been for many years and what we will continue to be and we're we, we just an amazing place. Mm -hmm. So I choose to see that and believe in that even sometimes it can be difficult. But how do I balance it? I believe in different, with different postures are, are necessary for different, um, for different times, you know? For instance, if I have a child, I might scold my child sometimes. Mm. That doesn't mean I hate my child, mm. you know, but correction is necessary. Right. And if I don't do that, if I just allow my child to run up and do everything that he want to do, unchallenged, then that is how things get out of hand, right. you know? So for me to make a song like creative, I mean, like everything cool and whatever social commentary um, that might be heavy and harsh, mm. That is just my way of saying, hey, I love you so much that I, I, that, that I see the need to, to correct you, mm -hmm. you know? So when I come with a song like We Move, it's like two sides of the same kind. We have so much to celebrate as well. And, mm -hmm. and the thing about Jamaicans too is that though what makes Jamaica beautiful is that so many bad things happening, unfortunate things, but we find a way for just... Mm -hmm. We find a way to make beauty out of it. We find a way to ex excel through that and move through that. So mm -hmm. that's what we move captures. You know that, that that that's what that's what the message is about. Yeah. And it's interesting. Um, more you talk a little bit about one the reception for it so far, but also you know how you, how it has moved beyond music. We move. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so. Well, that's one thing I try to do in general when, mm. when I make a song. It's how does it connect to real life? Mm. You know, um, uh, how do we express that idea in other ways and other mm. views? Um, so, it's like I don't write music about music. I write music about life. Mm. So it is all. It's going to be more than just music. Um, one thing that would be interesting with We Move right now is we're getting ready to release some merch, you know, and merch that addresses a whole situation of Jamaicans locally and abroad who 
want to have good things that can represent yeah. Jamaica, mm. you know, and and, and 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 that is a thing that we're taking upon ourselves to supply that to say, hey, here's an example of what we can do as young Jamaicans working together. Um, that's one aspect of it, but how you go to more than just music, we move is it's a statement. Whereas I have ten artists on one song, and there's different people are working with, whether it's um, Live in, Live High, or um, whoever else is making that statement of young independent people working together to build something. So that is how, for me, it goes beyond just the moment of the Olympic celebration. Mm. It's about that statement of unity, it's about that statement of working to improve each other, it's about that statement of reaching across and helping us, each other, mm. to rise together. Mm. And I feel like those are things that we can use in our everyday life, you know? Yeah. Um, if I can look out to my bridge and beside me sometimes, and see what you have going on for you. What, what, what are our common struggles right now? How, how can we solve them together? That is the thing about we move. Mm. We move together. Sure. You know, so yeah, that's that's how it goes beyond just music for me. Um, what can we expect from you going forward? And I want to ask that in the context of, you know, these two, very major things which, which I see are very important for you. Um, and that that find a way into your music at all times because one, I mean, they're, they're all one thing, but it's like one, like you said, the, the, the side of it where it's like, it's very important for you to, you know, as your, your DJ as an advocate to continue that social discourse, to make sure it helps it, to add to it and to, to add to it in parts where it is your DJ and there's no one else doing it that can do what an artist do in that position. Yeah. Uh, but there's also the aspect of like what we were talking about earlier of um, the philosophy of re the, the, distilling the philosophy from religion and that being about the human condition. Um, in the context of those two things, also you know, with the pandemic or whatever going on, what we can expect from you in the coming months? Gonna be single is gonna be more commentary. Is it gonna be just probably introspection? Because I think that's what the time that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna be a single an album? Because we know you, one we're creative and like you said, always trying to push. You know the the, the things that you're doing into different media. Mm -hmm. um, what's the next thing for you? And then, I guess what things that you're you have ambition for. Well, yeah, and those two ends. Um, all right, so right now, starting strictly music, the mm -hmm. music on a day by day. Um, you can probably expect some more, some more singles. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a project working on, separate from what has come out so far. Mm -hmm. Um, looking forward to, to to put that out. Hopefully in twenty twenty two, should definitely be out by then. Mm -hmm. Um. Looking forward to do that too because that is a project where I find ways to combine those two elements of like the social discourse but also talking about the whole ideology and the religion and everything and, 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 and how to put that in the same spaces and so that I can function and present something. Um, so what you can expect from me is to learn how to balance those things more and to inform myself more and both of them. I need to be reading more about more about the history of, of, of Jamaica and everything and more about how to have these ideological discourses in a in a proper way and that, that can benefit people and thing and you know. I have more of that to do. Um and yeah, it's like another thing I'm trying to figure out uh, learning about creativity. It's just how to even be more effective into that thing about having a song that is about life mm -hmm. and how to express it in other ways and how we present it. I want to, I, I want to be, if you should look at Chris Malakai as what kind of artist is he, mm -hmm. always look to me to define him 
me one interest in it even whatever. Mm-hmm. Meaning whether it's a live show, mm-hmm. whether it's merch, mm-hmm. whether it's writing, whether it's production, whether it's um mm-hmm. social media, what, what what whatever spaces I exist in mm-hmm. one of my jobs I believe as six man of time is to progress that space and to actually see that space in whatever way that is and to just learning how to keep innovating and, and I want to be one of those people who show new ways how to do the same thing for whatever people that is so me as an artist as somebody in marketing supposed to say look to my thing and say yo we learned that from from, from Kiss or a musician supposed to say, and say yo we learned that from from things of Kiss and sometimes not even just about me yeah. but I also want to be somebody who can give a platform and share my platform with mm-hmm. other reputable people and it's just about if you work with Chris Malaka if you're around me for me it's just about the best idea of him the best method yeah. um, and I try to foster that space for whoever I work with yeah that's interesting to look forward to and I mean it speaks of a lot of things because it means uh, you know and it's good to know so we have artists like you in the space because so artists stone deaf as fuck you know what I mean <laughs> Um, but it, it, what this means is that you're, if, if you have this, this, this kind of drive, obviously you're creative and, and, yeah. and, you know, I appreciate that you, you, you know, you're always pressing gas on it. And I think that, um, that's interesting, but yeah, to be one of those artists who, who will kind of look at the space and say, all right. How can I? Yeah. How can I? Almost not not innovate all the time, but how can I try something new? How can I try something interesting? And I think that mm-hmm. it's not easy to do that unless you're you're. I don't want to say the corner thing, which is plugged in, but that's what I'm saying. Unless you're receiving, um, or uh, unless you're receiving, um, you know, you're not tone deaf. You know yeah. what's going on in the world for one, and and you're plugged into like almost the latest. Yeah. Kinds of conversation yeah. that's going and, on, and not la- not just conversation, but latest forms of like whatever is buzzing, like mm-hmm. if you know whatever mm-hmm. new artists come out in certain spaces, yeah. and what helps me is just it is exciting to me, but also to approach everything that I do with with, with just that level of respect that it deserves. So, so we're not gonna go in a space and say yo, my bad, so I know me can do this. Who you who you who you who you um who you appreciate right now? Who, on a musical level, you know what I mean. I'm mean, not talking, yeah. I'm mean, not talking about like, you know, people. I'm mean, not talking about people who you respect or your peers. I'm mean, not talking about like having a musical experience. I'm mean, talking about talk to you as somebody who like music. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Somebody who you listen where you say, yo, you know, and obviously inspire all of them great things. But just uh, 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 the word, I try to find the word. It's a, it's almost like an isolated experience. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like listening to a Kendrick for me. You know, um, I'm sure you have you probably have different types of those experiences. Yeah. Every now and again, we find an artist, but sometimes it's an artist who are a lot more musical. For you, give me well, a few of those right music. now, and you know, on the musical side, but also on another side of like maybe conversation content or technical yeah. skills. Right, so yeah. Kendrick is one of those artists for me. It's funny that you said mm. that. But Kendrick, mm-hmm. <laughs> Kendrick for me is like, yo, there's a little yeah. bit of Kendrick Lamar in everything yeah. that I do. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Because, you know why? He's one of them artists that he should not be as big as he is. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's, he's, he's cheap. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's no way, Mr. Ban, who is saying 500 syllables and every verse mm-hmm. is one of the biggest artists in the world. Mm-hmm. Things don't work for him. But, him find a way for be so honed into his craft that him find a way to do all of that mm-hmm. and still connect. Mm-hmm. I trying to do that as well in terms of that inspire me. Mm-hmm. How can I be at the top of my craft but still connect to people and mm-hmm. still be relevant in art spaces? So that inspire me as an artist. Mm-hmm. That's as a fan. Another artist who me love. Another artist who named Emily King, an American lady. Um, Is that singer? Singer, yeah. She have an album with like Rakina, Birdcage or something like that? 
I think she have a new song named Birdcage or something like that. Uh, maybe. I, 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 one of her newer songs. I haven't really listened oh, to that one so much. But I think so. But yo, it's something about her music and her name. Ah, it's a song.